The Divine Child The Immature Version of the King We are all familiar with the Christian story of the birth of the baby Jesus. He is a mystery. He comes from the Divine Realm, born of a virgin woman. Miraculous things and events attend him. The star, the worshipping shepherds, the wise men from Persia. Surrounded by his worshippers, he occupies the central place not only in the stable but in the universe. Even the animals in popular Christmas songs attend him. In pictures, he radiates light, hallowed by the soft, glistening straw he lies upon. Because he is God, he is almighty. At the same time, he is totally vulnerable and helpless. No sooner is he born that the evil King Herod sniffs him out and seeks to kill him. So we see with the Divine Child, the healthy boy inside of us, and like all healthy aspects of boy psychology, we need to hold on to him, but not uh, let him flow through us. We do not let him make our decisions in life. <clears throat> the, the Divine Child signals that something new and creative, fresh and innocent, is being born within us. A new phase of life is beginning. Creative parts of himself that have been unconscious are now thrusting upward into awareness. He is experiencing new life. But whenever the divine child within us makes itself known, attack from Herod's within and without is not far behind. New life including new psychological life, is always fragile. When we feel this new energy manifesting within us, we need to protect it, because it is going to be attacked. So as we, we can see, the Divine Child is the renewing energy inside of us that keeps us feeling alive. It is important to keep this feeling throughout our life, but the real energy that we need to uh, cloud over it is the King energy, the one that guides the Divine Child's energy. Often our transition from the Divine Child to the King is made by another King. Ideally it is the image of our fathers. In uh, modern Western culture, unfortunately, this isn't always the case, and in fact is uh, relatively rare. And I believe that a lot of the breakdown in men comes from a lack of this king energy, particularly. Uh, we'll have a look at the king energy in a future video, but today we'll be looking at the divine child and right now, we'll have a look at the two shadow sides of this boy energy. Oops, it's a different color. The high chair tyrant, the active pole of the divine child shadow. The high chair tyrant is epitomized by the image of little Ford Flo Fauntleroy sitting in his high chair, banging his spoon on the tray and screaming for his mother to feed him, kiss him and attend him. Like a dark version of the Christ child, he is the center of the universe, 
Others exist to meet his all-powerful needs and desires. But when the food comes, it often does not meet his specifications. It is not good enough. It is not the right kind. It is too hot or too cold, too sweet or too sour. So he spits on the floor and throws it across the room. If he becomes sufficiently self-righteous, no food, no matter how, how hungry he is, will be adequate. And if his mother picks him up after failing him so completely, he will scream and twist and reject their, her advances because they were not offered at exactly the right moment. The high chair tyrant hurts himself with his grandiosity, limitless of his, the limitless of his demands, because he rejects the very things he needs for life. He needs for life, food and love. So look at your own life and see where you actually reject love or sustenance in your life, and instead. Uh, you know, look at other people's failings or where other people do not meet your own high demands. Perhaps you haven't seen the high demands in your own life and, you know, you are angry at other people. And so you uh, blame other people for, you know, the world not giving you everything you wanted in life. Who knows? Characteristics of the high chair tyrant include arrogance, childness, and irresponsibility, even to himself as a mortal infant who has to meet his biological and psychological needs. All of this is what psychologists call inflation or pathological narcissism. The high chair tyrant who attacks his human host is the perfectionist. He expects, he expects the impossible for himself and berates himself, just as his mother did, when he can't meet the demands of the infant within. The tyrant pressures a man for more and better performance and is never satisfied with what he produces. The unfortunate man becomes the slave of the grandiose two-year-old inside him. He has to have more material things. He can't make mistakes. And because he can't possibly meet the demands of the inner tyrant, he develops ulcers and gets sick. He can't, in the end, stand up to the unrelenting pressure. It has been said that the divine child wants just to be and have all things flow towards him. He does not want to do. The artist wants to be admired without having to lift his finger. The CEO wants to sit in his office, enjoying his leather chairs, his cigars, his attractive secretaries, uh, drawing his high salary and enjoying his perks. He does not want to do anything for the company. He imagines himself invulnerable and all-important. He often demeans and degrades others who are trying to accomplish something. He is in his high chair. And, he's setting, and he is setting himself up to get the axe. Where in your life do you expect the impossible for yourself? Where do you expect the impossible from others and you're angry when they can't achieve it? Where do you want to get something for nothing? You don't want to work for anything. The Weakling Prince the passive pole of the divine child shadow. The other side of the bipolar shadow of the divine child is the weakling prince. The boy, and later the man, who is possessed by the weakling prince, appears to have very little personality, no enthusiasm for life, and very little initiative. 
This is the boy who needs to be coddled, who dictates all those around him by his silent or his whining and complaining helplessness. He needs to be carried around on, on a pillow. Everything is too much for him. Continuing on, he reveals the dishonesty of his helplessness. However, in his dagger-like verbal assault on his siblings, his biting sarcasm directed against them, and his manipulation of their feelings. So what we see here is what is often called a passive, aggressive, passive aggressiveness, where we feel and act like a victim of the world where uh, we should be treated with sympathy and other people should take care of us because of the hardship in life. But really, we have a deep resentment of those uh, around us. As is the case with all bipolar disorders, the ego possessed by one pole will, from time to time, gradually slide or suddenly jump over to the other pole. Using the imagery of bipolar magnetism to describe this phenomenon, in other words, when we have a tendency to flip-flop between both extremes, we, say, we see that the polarity of the magnet reverses depending on the direction of the electrical current passing through it. When such a reversal occurs in the boy caught in the bipolar shadow of the divine child, he will switch from tyrann tyrannical outbursts to depressed passivity, or from apparent weakness to rageful displays. In other words, temper tantrums made by adult men. So, accessing the divine child. In order to access the divine child appropriately, we need to acknowledge him, but not identify with him. Very important. We cannot let the Divine Child flow through us, but we need to know His energies inside of us. We need to love and admire the creativity and beauty of this primal aspect of the masculine self, because if we don't have this connection with Him, we are never going to see the possibilities in life. The, the, so the Divine Child is the center of creativity. It makes us enjoy life. Mm. The next part goes on to say this. The ancient Romans believed that every human baby is born with what they called his or her genius, a guardian spirit assigned at birth. The Romans knew that it was not the man's ego that was the source of his music, his art, his statecraft, or his courage, courageous deeds. It was the divine child, an aspect of the self within him. So, think about that now, and make a list of where the high chair tyrant, the part that wants uh, grandiose recognition without doing any work, and who gets angry at other people, where does that come into your life? Or the weakling prince, who acts like a victim because of all the hardship, and you know, you deserve the sympathy and recognition of other people because of the hardships in life. And how can you access the divine child inside of you? How can you heal this shadow playing inside of you and access true div uh, divinity inside yourself? In other words, uh, creativity, the well of creativity inside of you. <laughs>